Hi everyone and welcome to my podcast. I am in a completely different setup today because I am filming um, from back home. That also means I don't have my tripod so I'm going to keep you on my watch today so if you see the watch lit up and it's my face that's just why. Um, I should probably start with the introduction. So my name is Caroline and welcome to my YouTube channel Caroline's Knits where I mainly talk about knitting. I am originally Danish, but I usually live in, well, I do live in Scotland with my partner Ben and my puppy Fela. But just now I am actually in Denmark, so welcome uh, to my mum's house. I didn't want to tidy up her whole place to film, so I've kind of just propped you up in um, her sort of big living room space as I could um, to talk you through um, all the stuff I finished today. So... Um, I'm also joined by another papa, so I'm joined by mum's papa, um, and she, um, her name is Nora. Nora is a chocolate Labrador, and you might hear her little uh, paws click clacking around uh, the living room. I definitely think she was a tiny bit confused when I dragged out all the knitting. Um, I've had so many plans while I've been home, it hasn't really been feasible for me to film before today. Um, but I'm also aware that my family are coming back soon, so I'm going to try not to waffle on too much today. As usual, anything I talk about will be linked down below, where you will also find my social media links. If you have any questions or comments, I love reading them and I do try my best to get back to them. So, let's get started today. Uh, I should start with what I'm wearing. So, I'm wearing my first uh, finished project. This is the Easy Evening Dress Turtleneck Edition that I've test knitted for Easy S Knit. Um, I finished this um, a few days ago. Um, this was a quite a big project. It is obviously a dress. Um, I will maybe see if I can also get some cutaways, but um, it is a full on dress that I knitted. Um, it actually didn't take me as long as I thought it would. Oh, Dog is outside. Um, so I test knitted this. Um, there was some issues with me getting the yarn, which put me slightly behind schedule. Um, so from when I cast on till um, the deadline uh, for feedback, it was two weeks. And I was keen to see just how much <laughs> I could finish in that time. And actually, um, from start to finish, this project took me less than three weeks, um, which I think is crazy considering the size. It is knitted in uh, one strand of Drops Nepal, which I might have here. Nah, they're all through. I don't really think you need to see Drops Nepal. Um, it is quite a thick yarn. It runs, I think, about 75 metres per 100, uh, but 75 metres per 50 grams. Um, so it's quite a heavyweight yarn. Um, it's a mixture of like wool and alpaca. Um, to me, it is next to skin soft. It is very, very nice wear, even the turtleneck. I knitted it in medium grey, which basically I've been so lucky to have been sponsored quite a few times and I'm really trying to be better at picking neutrals. I just think I have plenty of like colours lined up and um, actually I kind of just need something quite neutral. I also thought if I was to knit a whole dress, I'd want it to be kind of wearable for all occasions. Um, so I thought like this kind of medium grey would be quite good. Also because with Fela, um, anything that is kind of mud proof is the best. This is obviously knitted in um, break and rib stitch, um, which kind of creates lots of texture, lots of like, um, like it's quite stretchy. I should mention that this is unblocked. Um, I don't have all my blocking gear here. So um, I've just, contrary to what I usually do, I've just started wearing it from the beginning. And yeah, I think it should grow a little bit. Um, you can sort of see here, this is where like the arm is sitting or like the shoulders. I think it, I think I'm under the gauge by about one stitch, which I spoke to Easy S Knit about because I couldn't hit gauge even going up half a needle size, but you could feel in the gauge, like you can see how much this stretches. And I can already see it has grown in length, even pre-blocking. Um, just simply the weight of the garment um, changes the gauge. So, we both like we we agreed that it was better for me just to to sort of knit with the gauge I got than size up even more because it might grow so much in like washing and handling it just because broken rib stitch is so stretchy. 
I will say that broken rib stitch is brilliant um, if you are quite a new knitter or you have slight gauge difference between your knits and pearls because you can't tell. So even though this is knitted flat, um, there's not really any different, like, well, basically it's knitted flat until the armholes. It's that kind of construction, so you know, where you start at the back, leave those stitches to rest and you start one side of the front, the other side, join that, knit that for a while, then join all the way in the round, all the way to the bottom, pick up sleeves for... Um, the arms, pick up sleeves for the neck, pick up sleeves for the neck, pick up stitches for the neck, that kind of construction. Um, and I do think that um, if you, for example, look at one of my own projects, the Wednesday sweater, there's such a big gauge difference between my knits and pearls on the flat part compared to my knit stitches in the round that it becomes really, really obvious. And I think broken rib stitch is great in the sense that it doesn't show. Broken rib stitch, if in case you haven't knitted it before, is just one round of knits and one round of ribbing. So one knit, one pearl, one knit, one pearl, the whole way around. And yeah, it's in that sense quite easy. Um, you don't have to be as proficient in reading stitches as you might with some other patterns. I like I find with the half fisherman's rib that I'm currently knitting that uh, that is quite hard for me to sort of see um kind of what round i'm on so and again it's really lovely and like stretchy and it, it creates quite like a squishy fabric so um i really enjoyed this i know that um they are planning to uh, translate it as well so it should be available in english for uh, a final note before i move on to my current nibs um, I decided to size down. Um, so when I applied for test knit, I said, uh, I think as I have been losing a little bit of weight, that I'm starting to be closer to a 110 centimeter um, chest instead of being closer to 120. So I tend to size down a little bit um, just to have a better fit, which I do in general. If you watch my podcast for a while, you may know this. But I thought, especially for this not being tight fitting i didn't want it still not to be like really oversized and i think it's quite a good balance i think even if it grows a little bit it's still gonna have it's not gonna be massive massive on me um because it does mean that currently as you can tell there isn't all that much positive ease around my chest but then it grows around um sort of my hips and and bum it has slightly more width um it also has two slits on the side now, the length in the pattern, I think, is a tiny bit to the short side on me. I could probably have added a bit more length, but then I kind of like it short on me. So um, that's kind of, I guess, a judgment call you can make. Um, one of my only comments for the pattern was that I thought they could add more decreases to the sleeves because I did think they were quite, quite long. So that's really all I have to say about this project. Um, I really rate Nepal so far. Um, I'm noticing it is fluffing quite a lot, and I do think this will pill like um, when I was just looking in the mirror before filming I could see there's a few pills like forming especially here around my hips and stuff which is kind of a strange place like usually it starts underneath the arms first but it hasn't on this but I do think it will pill on the other hand I didn't use all the yarn that I had sponsored which in total I think I was sponsored 22 balls and I'll update Ravelry with the exact amount but um, I definitely needed less than that I think I'm about 16 17 balls of yarn and in drops in the pal that is still a garment um that is under from memory under 40 pounds which to me makes the yarn quite attractive i think for a lot of people that it's actually affordable um because there's certainly yarns that i would love to knit a whole dress in but i'd struggle to justify um you know paying um seven to eight pounds a ball whereas nepal i think runs about the three pound mark maybe slightly less um they have a v-neck sort of vest version which i'd quite like to knit i'm just gonna let the dog in otherwise she'll start barking at me also realized i forgot this project as well so i went to pick that up no i want some more attention i think so yeah that's that's my finished project oh yes yeah, so i was saying sorry uh before i got interrupted they've also made a vest uh or pinafore as the crea bear reminded me it's called um version of this uh you could probably hit gauge with this in Peruvian Highland Wall as well from Phil Colonna if you'd like. Um, apologies, I thought it was only my dog that was demanding, but it seems Nora thinks she needs attention too. Right, so I'm going to show you really quickly just an update on this. Um, because I had to rush knit this, my first sweater um, isn't completely finished, but I should be able to finish it. Hi Nora, should be able to finish it quite soon. 
So I'm sort of halfway through the final sleeve and it's a little bit crumbled up because obviously it's been shoved in my suitcase. So um, as soon as I'm done with my next work in progress, um, this will be this will be my focus basically um, because I think it will be so, so lovely. And I'm really sad that I had to put it on hold, um, but I'm hoping to, to get this finished real soon. So I'm not gonna show you too much of this because hopefully the next time I see you, that is going to be a finished object instead of just a whip. So um, I'll sort of save it for then. I, before leaving home, I knew that I wanted to use up some of my stash. Obviously my stash just, you will see there's a lot of acquisitions today. My stash just keeps on growing and not shrinking. So the more I can, can use up my stash, the better. And one quality that I thought I could find quite a nice project for is, I think there's still full ball that doesn't have its belly, belly band on. There we go. So this is the Knitting for Olive uh, Double Soft Merino, which I actually think they're discontinuing, um, which is a shame. It is quite a nice yarn. Um, I should say ad sponsored because I originally received this yarn for test knit, um, but this is not, it wasn't sponsored for this. This was just leftover, leftover balls really. Um, because I thought I was going to run out of yarn, then didn't run out of yarn, but I'd already put in an order for more yarn. So this is um, a bit hard to see because I've obviously stopped in the middle of a row. I'm almost done with the body now. So this is going to be a wrapped cardigan um, in size 10 to 16 months. So this is for my cousin um, who just turned one. Um, and this colour was just right up my auntie street and um, so i asked if she would want this kind of wrap cardigan um it's from a designer called strikeig and i know some of her patterns are translated to english but i don't think she's translated this but if you ask i'm sure it's one of those things if there's you know people want to buy your pattern usually designers are quite happy to translate it the reason i was drawn to this is it's called uh, she has a whole series of patterns called the chunky baby knit and this is the chunky baby knit wrap or chunky baby wrap or something like that. And what really attracted me is that most of this is knitted on, but well, all of the patterns are knitted in sort, sort of um, Erin weight yarns. So things like Double Soft Merino, the Kalana Peruvian Highland Wool. Um, I have some leftover Nepal that I could use. And that also means it's knitted on needle size five um, besides the ribbing. Um, so I cast this on, like I've really only been knitting on this for two days and I've definitely not had as much knitting time as I sometimes do. So I also think that like, that is like pretty quick. I can probably finish, you know, the um, I'm at the body ribbing now and then I just need to knit two tiny baby sleeves and an eye cord. Um, and I absolutely love that you could actually finish a whole baby garment in that amount of time. In the Chunky Baby Knit series, there's also some quite cute trousers. Um, there's like a body type thing, you know, where it's like straps and closes down at the bottom. Um, there's a normal cardigan. There's like oval style trousers as well. Um, and yeah, I could definitely see myself knitting more patterns from this range because it is a yarn weight that you could hit quite easily. Or you could even do it like a bagger style and like mix lots of leftovers for it, that kind of thing, but still, um, it's quite nice. I quite liked in the pattern. So, um, for example, she describes how, you know, that this has like twisted um, knit stitches here in the raglan and up in like in all the ribbing. Um, but I do think the patterns are so easy to adapt if you wanted to make them um, without that or with just a thick raglan or you could put lots of other things. So, yeah, they're those kind of like versatile patterns that I just think are great for leftovers. And I'm starting to hit that age where all my friends are, are having children. So I have a feeling that in the next few years, I'll be knitting lots of baby patterns. Um, so I kind of like that I could even knit this in, for example, Jots Merino Extra Fine, like the, the sort of thicker superwash on. And it would be fine for someone who's not going to stand and hand wash their knits. And for my granny, or not for my granny, for my auntie, who is um, an absolute knitwear lover, I know she'll really, really appreciate the double soft merino. And it also clears, you know, those two to three balls of yarn in your stash. I thought I'd also show you this, which I'm storing it in. Um, this is um, actually a project bag that I bought in uh, Sustanegrene, which is a Danish shop. I think it was 
um, about 65 kroner, so about seven, seven pounds ish. Um, and it's just brilliant with these big pockets and it fits a good project in here. Um, I also have like my massive haberdashery pouch and everything in here. And as you can tell, there's still plenty of room. Um, so yeah, I have really been loving this. Um, I should say that um, a goal for 2022 is not to add more yarn to my stash because I don't need any more yarn ever, potentially. Um, there are there was some stuff that I got from Sabrina as a Christmas present, um, but I'd like to show you that in the next podcast when I can show you everything. And I left the yarn that she uh, kindly gifted me um, back in de uh, back in Scotland, so I can't show you that now. So I'll save my Christmas present from Simona um, till I'm hoping maybe to film just before New Year's because there'll be a few more things to show, I think, because I'm still on holiday and there'll be some projects to be finished. However, while I've been in Denmark, I have bought and received uh, quite a lot of yarn. So I'm going to run through acquisitions now. If that's not for you, that's completely fine. And I'm also just going to say that clearly I need to stop adding yarn to my stash because I need time to knit it. So first off, I'm going to show you my uh, main Christmas present, um, which yes, I did pick myself. <laughs> um, you might have seen I've knit, uh, test knitted for Augustine's before. Um, I should also say that none, nothing in this portion is like sponsored or or gifted in the like um, marketing sense. It's all paid for by uh, my money or my family's money, right? So um, you might have seen, I've tested it for Augustine's before. She makes really beautiful feminine pro projects mainly. Lots of like pretty lace. Um, and she recently released a pattern called the Northern Augustine's number one. And it's like a collar work yoke with like a beautiful roll neck. And after I've knitted the Nordstrand sweater, I have really been in the mood for more projects that are collar work. Um, also because it's so practical with the dog and when I saw that pattern I knew exactly what yarn I wanted to knit it in um, so for my from my grandparents um, I really wanted this combination or this uh, particular yarn Camaros or uh, Camarosa's Sniffnook which means snowflake in case you didn't know is probably my number one yarn ever um, it is so incredibly soft and I have knitted three sweaters in it. None of them have any major issues with pilling um, and complete softness. Like this is next to skin soft for me. And it's it's quite thick. It runs 110 meters per 50 grams. It's 55% alpaca, 35% cotton and 10% extra fine merino wool. Um, so I picked these two colours, which are quite neutral for me, I think. Um, so the main colour is going to be this, which is called Steenquart, which means stone grey. And then this one is in the colour um, marine blot, or basically marine. Um, it's like a very, very, very dark navy. Um, so this is going to get on my needles very soon because I'm really excited to knit it. And I just know that this yarn is a yarn that I really like cherish having um, having a full project in. So yes, I'm really excited to do this. So that's yarn acquisition number one. Uh, this is from the shop called Tender Guan. If you're keen to see um, the yarn shop that I have visited um, while I've been in Denmark, um, in the previous Vlogmas episode, episode number three, um, there's clips from them all. So you can see the shops if you're curious what Dana shops looks like. Right, a sip of tea, having some nice Earl Grey. So also from Tendergren, um, I knew I bought this last year in Sakami's sale. Was it last year? It was definitely before we moved. So I bought this a while ago. And um, this is her colour Baba Yaga, which I think um, she definitely has just had this colour in the sale. I think even on this base, which is the... 60% superwash fine merino, 20% baby alpaca, and 20% mulberry silk. My mum has touched essentially every single piece of wool that I own. Um, and even things like sniff nook, she wasn't too sure about. This she touched and said, this is soft, soft enough for against like skin for her, which is, that's a sign that this is as soft as it comes. 
it's not the softest yarn that I have felt, but I do, it is of, of course incredibly soft. Um, but this colour is really stunning, but it's also really multifaceted and I really want to knit, I have a sweater quantity of this, and I really want to knit like a sweater with it. I'm still not sure which one. I feel like it looked the best, either in a completely like simple pattern, like the balloon sweater from Petite Knit or uh, the Carl Johan from Knitting for Olive, um, or I've also considered maybe one of a long Iveg Anna's patterns. So she kindly gifted me the silver leaf jumper earlier this year. It has like lace sleeves. And I think that might be nice. I'd love to hear what you guys think. Is something like this too busy for like lace sleeves? But anyway, I really wanted a second strand for this because this base is so incredibly soft and luxurious. I did not want to buy my hair for it because I'm really sensitive to my hair, as you may know. I wanted something I knew would be next to skin soft. So Camarosa is, as you can tell, one of my favorite brands. So I bought some Moonat Salt. And I deliberately brought just one skein because I wanted to hold them up together. So I matched these two. I think it's a pretty good good match. This is uh, called Gamma Rosa, which is like old rose colour. And it has that kind of dusky, dusky pinky one that I think will still complement the sort of darker uh, purples that run through this, but still fit with that kind of almost pink base um, and there's a tiny bit of orange speckles. So this is going to become a project in the new year. So that's what I bought from Tendercon. As you can tell, plenty of yarn already. Then we went to another shop in my hometown. So Tendercon is in Ulanza and this next shop is as well. And this is, um, and this shop was called Pure Pipe. Now I asked her because I'll speak about different quality of yarn. If she ships to the UK, she ships all over the world, but lots of, um, Places that used to ship to the UK stopped after Brexit because of import rules being really complicated. But she said she shipped to like the States and New Zealand and Australia, etc. So um, if you are looking for some of these Danish yarn quality, like quant like Danish yarn brands. So she had lots of Isair, she had lots of Kamalosa. No, she didn't have Kamalosa, that's the one she didn't have, but she did have Isair. She had Phil Kalana, she had Hilholt, which I'll show in a minute. That's the sort of rustic wool petite knit uses. Um, and I don't think, I saw a few Gepard as well. So she stocks lots of Danish brands and she was really, really helpful and said that she's always like happy to, to help anyone if you're interested. Um, I saw, so basically I actually went in to buy some of that rustic wool and I'll speak about why in a minute. Um, but then just feeling it in real life and sort of calculating how much it would be, I just decided that I can always buy that down the line when I've kind of worked through more of my stash because realistically it was not a project I was going to start tomorrow anyway. I already kind of had yarn for it in my stash, etc. etc. Long story short, I just decided not to buy more rustic yarn because I have plenty of rustic yarn and I don't I didn't really need any more. However, Simona from Knit and I have been gushing over the marble sweater since we first saw it. And for me, it always looked, like, well, it looks like the type of sweater I would get lots of wear out. So when I saw she had um, the marble sweater, it's a new design from Petite Knit, I'll pop in a photo. I'll be good and edit this very well because I'm on holiday, I have no excuses. And it is kind of like much more of a chunky fit. And yeah, I just think that would be really, really useful, really. So, and it's one of those designs that I know I can knit really fast and use loads. So Simona bought in one of the new Lenagato qualities called Anise, which should work single, single, or, well, held with a, a chunky mohair on its own. I know she's met Gage with Sandness Brush Alpaca because I suggested that combo with Anise. Um, so that might also work, but you can always ask Simona if you're keen to try something else. But anyway, in the petite knit version, it is hand dyed, like chunky my hair. And I had looked at buying um, from Sous La Lille or some of the other sort of hand dyes that are currently dyeing it. However, it is like 250 kroner skein, which is about like 25, 30 pounds a skein. And you do need three, at least for my size. And then with the wall on top of it, I was like, that is a lot of money. Um, so I was a bit in doubt. Basically, I was trying to find an alternative, etc., etc. However, in Pure Pope, we'd just been talking about this rustic yarn and the growth of rustic yarn and the love for that. And then I ended up walking up with this, <laughs> um, which is um, Gepard's, um, which is also a Danish yarn brand. A chunky knit my hair. Um, so it's hand dyed by... Um, 
Sus Gepard, who owns Gepard, and it is um, recommended for five and a half millimeter, five and a half millimeter needles to so twelve millimeter, and it's seventy eight percent kid my hair, thirteen percent merino, and nine percent nylon, and it runs one hundred grams runs two hundred meters. This was in a sale box, um, so she had it reduced from. I'd like it was fifty percent off, so I think each skein was a hundred and thirty kroner, which is about fourteen ish pounds. Um, so I bought, um, and then she had exactly three skeins of this, which is um, it just says color C on it. Um, so it's this kind of, I guess, undyed base with uh, spring like big chunks of pink and green and red. And that's basically it throughout. So um, I'm gonna knit this with just a neutral base. Um, but yeah, I bought all the schemes in this color, but she did also have a purple, which was quite nice. And I would probably have gone for, but I know uh, Simona doesn't stock Denny's in a color that would work with that. And I knew I wanted to buy the yarn from her. So that was all my answer purchases. When I actually went to those two yarn shops with my granny, who gifted me the sniff nook. Um, but also when she got, when she picked me up, she's like, I found this yarn in my stash. I don't, like, I won't have time to knit it. Um, my granddad is uh, very ill and basically she, he needs a lot of care. So she basically only knits socks um, anymore and, and, and basically have given up on garment knitting. So she's like, I had this yarn in my stash. I, I just don't think I'll ever get to it. You knit so much, maybe maybe you could use it. So I'm just gonna pick up from this bag. So what she had in her stash was this. Now this feels like such a contrast after, yeah, so um, it was two skeins of each of these colors, but obviously there's no need for me to hold it all up. One of them, she had actually already rolled up. So I think she said she'd started it, bought it for a pattern. She'd started it and then just couldn't get on with the pattern and then never finished it. So this yarn is, um, it's called, this one is called Dansk Pilsul. Now, I should say that um, this is from 2007. Um, I know that because she'd kept the receipt. It was like a whole thing. Basically, she'd seen one of her friends in this garment that she bought this yarn for and she really liked the look of it and she wanted it and she ended up having to order it distance and it was before you know internet shopping became what it has become now so it's a big thing and even back then this yarn was quite pricey um dense pencil um this kind of weight is still spun by Hilholt wool spinnery um so you can still buy that and that's what pure pipe sells this does say it's from densepilsul.dk, so maybe that does still exist. I know that the gauge on this end of feel, because I felt the, the modern version of this, um, it feels really similar. So I presume they haven't really changed how they spin it all that much. Um, Hillholt's current Pilsul base, it, I think, has different yarn weights. So this is the fingering weight one, which I think is 8 slash 2. At the end of it, so instead of just being dense pencil, it says eight slash two, but this looks the same. So she gave me these and um, I've wanted to try this quality for a while. Um, if you've ever seen Petite Knit, it's like one of her favorite qualities, um, but I knew this might be a little bit harsh for my sensitive skin. So she um, essentially had these three colors. Um, so there is like this like brownie beige, grayish color, one color green and a slightly darker color green. Now the thing is, I have two skeins of each and I don't know what to make with them. It is definitely, um, it runs it runs 390 meters per 100 grams. Like this looks so much thinner. That can surely not be a full 100 grams. So I might have to weigh that. That would change my plans a little bit. I think, I think if I held this together, I think these could mull together. I could use this as like a contrast color in color work because I know I could technically knit just a stripey jumper with it. However, this is, to me, it's not horrifically scratchy, but this is not gonna be next to skin soft like this is at all. So I kind of want to use something that is like less, 
wonder why this is so much thinner. Maybe she didn't. She only needed 50 grams, grams of this and then I need to recalculate how much I have. But anyway, um, I think it would be great to use this as a contrast colour. But maybe I need to change my plans now because now I think there's less of this than I thought and then I won't have enough as a contrast. I thought badge and blue might work, but then this is quite thin. So maybe I am best. I really don't know what to make with this. I love your ideas because I do want to keep it in one project and I didn't want to buy more of this rustic rustic yarn because I don't actually think I'd wear it. Like, I don't think I'd get use out of it. Um, I wish the woolly knit yarns were... I will have to see when I come back home if they maybe are slightly more similar thickness. Especially now when I realised I thought this was 100 grams, but unless this has just been twisted extra tight, well... You can see with your naked eyes, that's not going to be the same amount of yarn, is it? So anyway, any suggestions on this? Very much appreciated. It runs uh, 390 meters per 100 gram. And it doesn't have any like suggested gauge or anything on it. So yeah, I don't know what to make with this. But they sold, basically they sold this yarn in the, in the Pure Pope shop. So if you are looking for yarn like this, I think for anyone who's a rustic lover, they'll love it. I know Pen, uh, Laura Penrose, um, Penrose Knits spoke about the, the the schemes that her partner bought for her when he was last in uh, Scandinavia. So um, she can give you th her thoughts on it as well if you want to see more, um, because it is definitely rustic. But yeah, so there's that. Now, this was all from the same day, um, but today I arrived in Denmark. We went to... Um, another shop that um, I'm sure many people would love to visit. So I don't come from Copenhagen, um, but it was a shop in Copenhagen I really wanted to, to visit and, and you have to fly, where I live, you have to fly into Copenhagen. So we went to the Knitting for Olive shop. It was so lovely to see all the yarns in person because I actually do exactly what I went in for. I spoke about uh, this, about this, a bit in the vlogmas episode but i find the hardest part about going to all these shops is that i get completely overwhelmed by the amount of yarn i feel like with each shop i kind of went knowing what i was looking for because otherwise i would don't i wouldn't even know where to begin so um i'm going to show you the knitting for olive stuff after i've had a little bit of something to drink so as you know i've been so fortunate to have test knitted with sponsored yarn for knitting for olive once had a, a the, the test knit where I got that double soft merino I showed you earlier. I also had silk, I held it with silk my hair and I have some left from that. I also have a deferred sweater that I finished earlier this year and um, I also had some yarn left over. So from all of these, I had one ball of merino and um, one ball of silk my hair. So I think I have slightly more of each, but I'm sure you kind of get the gist. Um, so I really wanted to use them all in a project because they all sort of go in the same colour family. So when I went into knitting for Olive, I knew I wanted to buy yarn that would work from for probably an hour's sweater from Petite Knit, which is, is a stripe, stripe sweater design with um, a saddle shoulder and um, it's quite a classic design. So I went into knitting for Olive knowing that's the only yarn I really needed. Not that I can have picked up loads. Um, knitting for Olive does colours so well. So I'm just going to show you what I bought. Um, so obviously these colours I bought to go with what I already have. Um, so the first sort of colour I went to go with it um, is this, which is called Dark Mustard in the Silk My Hair. And this is called Dark Ochre, which is this um, like quite pretty dark curry type shade. Um, this was my dad's suggestion um, and I really liked um how this is like completely different than all the pinks. Um, so that was the first shade. Um, I knew that I wanted a complete neutral to go with all the crazy colors. So that's what this is, which is the color um, cream and the color kit or putty. Yeah, putty and cream, um, which is this really nice, like beigey, whitish tone. I actually quite like this. I think it's like, white without being like stock. I also picked up one ball of merino because the soft silk my hair that helped with the double soft merino I obviously didn't have matching merino for so um, I picked up a one ball of merino in rose clay and then my final colour choice so the rest of these colours are quite light um, 
and obviously you have the dark ochre that's a bit of a contrast because I I wasn't sure if I wanted to keep it all like pink tones and then maybe have like you know cream and maybe a grey or something like that but then I just decided I wanted a tiny bit more contrast so obviously I had the, the ochre colour and then finally I picked up this which is the dark navy colour so this is the merino in navy blue and the my hair in navy blue so i actually picked some that matched um so that's what i picked up from knitting for olive it was amazing seeing all the colors in real life obviously knitting for olive is just it's just one of those brands that everyone kind of loves and um it's quite funny because something i'm not used to when i go into yard shops is like people walking in expecting help because i learned to knit during the pandemic and i don't live really close to a local yarn shop. I think I'm just so used to planning my own projects and figuring things out on my own. So it was interesting to see it not be like that. I can see the dog is moving. I'm assuming people might be coming home. So I think that's all I have to show you. I'm now showing you all the yarn. I hope you enjoyed it. And um, yeah, hope I'll see you again soon. Bye.